Defense Secretary Ash Carter made a surprise visit to Baghdad on Thursday, his first visit there since taking office in February. It comes as Iraqi commanders prepare to launch a U.S.-backed mission to retake the key city of Ramadi from ISIS. Joining us from Washington is CBS News senior national security analyst Juan Zarate. Uh, Juan, um, Ash Carter is not expected to make any major announcements in strategy or troop levels in Iraq. So, so what's he hoping to accomplish there? Well, I think he wants to do a couple of things, Jeff. One, he wants to demonstrate that there r remains an American commitment to building Iraqi capacity into the fight against ISIS and, and helping to stabilize Iraq, that, uh, that that commitment is still there and having the Secretary of Defense on the ground is important. Uh, he also wants to demonstrate that American efforts to uh, increase capacity of the Iraqis, both will and capacity, uh, remains. Keep in mind, he was very critical in recent weeks of Iraqi will to fight. And I think this is a way of uh, sending a clear signal that the U.S. is there, we're going to help, and we have to maintain momentum against ISIS along with our allies, the Iraqis. But, but the thing here for the U.S. is we, we, we want to help, but we also want to show that the Iraqis can help themselves. That's absolutely right. I think it's, it's been clear U.S. policy that we're not going to be doing the fighting on the ground. We're not on the front lines. Uh, and so we're going to have to rely on proxy forces on the ground, allies on the ground, to do the heavy lifting and the fighting, to retake cities like Ramadi, ultimately Mosul, the second largest city in Iraq that still remains in ISIS hands. I, I think they're also, we have to demonstrate that we have some staying power as well. And I think uh, that's why the secretary is there and he's trying to demonstrate that we can actually get things done and we can help move the Iraqis forward in a way that doesn't drive sectarianism and make the problems worse rather than better. On the subject of ISIS, uh, one FBI chief James Comey made some news when he said that ISIS is now a bigger threat than al-Qaeda. You could probably glean this from paying attention to the news on a, on a day-in and day-out basis at this point, given the arrests that are being made, both internally and externally. But were you surprised by what you heard? Not really, Jeff. And you and I have talked about this. The reality is that ISIS is now the leading vanguard of the broader and global uh, violent extremist movement, uh, taking over the mantle from al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda still has remnants, still has elements of its core that remain dangerous. But the Islamic State has a, a geographic foothold. It's attracting thousands of fighters. It's governing. It's inspiring uh, actors to act on its behalf in Western capitals. And it's establishing beachheads in places like Libya, Egypt, uh, and even Afghanistan. And so uh, the director is responding to the threats that he's seen, and certainly the fact that ISIS represents, in his mind, the leading vanguard of this violent Islamic extremist movement. One, there was this horrific suicide bombing that took place in Turkey a few days ago. Uh, today, it appears Turkey is now going to allow the U.S. to launch airstrikes uh, from inside Turkey against ISIS. What do you make of this? Jeff, this, may, this attack may have been the straw that broke the camel's back. Uh, keep in mind, there's been some ambiguity as to whether or not Turkey has been willing to go aggressively after the Islamic State, whether or not there's been some sympathies with the Islamic State because of the role that they're playing in fighting and trying to topple the Assad regime, uh, which uh, the Turkish government wants to happen, uh, you know, urgently. Uh, so this may have, have done it, though. This may have caused the political winds to shift and the military and the political leadership in Turkey to finally decide to allow the U.S. to begin to use uh, Turkish air bases to go after the Islamic State. And uh, the bombing also may have been uh, an overstepping by the Islamic State in terms of whatever deal they may have made in the past with Turkey about attacking in, in the country. They certainly did attack. It was brutal. Uh, and the Turkish population has reacted. And you may be seeing the effects of that with this decision uh, to allow American warplanes to fly out of Turkey. Our senior national security analyst, Juan Zarate, Juan, thanks very much. Thank you, Jeff.